Today, we're taking the opportunity to shine a light on the long-term effects that stress can have on your body. What, you don't have any stress? You, do, you don't have to listen to this? Of course you have stress. Stress is because we're alive. There's a million reasons we all have stress, but it's how you manage that stress that really can make a difference in the quality of your life. So pay attention and stay tuned. Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Scan FYI. So my guest today, and you know, you heard in our intro, we're talking about stress. So I want everyone who's listening to relax, sit back, have your coffee, just like we do. And my guest today is Jennifer Draw. She's from Ascend Health. So welcome, Jen. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. Stress-free or not. Ah. <laughs> So why don't you tell everyone what you do and what you do with Ascend Health and a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I am, I've been with Ascend Health for 12 years now. We offer hospice, palliative services, and then up in North Jersey, we also do home health. Um, in my role as Director of Business Development, I oversee our marketing team and our primary role is getting the message out and educating the community about these incredible services and addressing some of the myths and misconceptions that might make hospice and palliative care sound much scarier than it actually is. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy to be here this morning. So you know what, let me also tell our listeners that we did have the pleasure of having you as a guest previously. And you did talk about uh, so I'll say you demystified many um, many of the common misconceptions about hospice care. So if anyone out there is listening, you know what? I'm going to put a link to that in, in the comments. You might want to go back and take a check at that. Oh, fantastic. But meanwhile, stress. Okay. Stress. Everyone has it because it, I, I feel like it's part of being alive. And if someone tells you they have no stress in their life, well, maybe they're three years old. Because come on, it's just it's just part of being alive. And it's reminding us that we are alive. But the problem becomes when we don't manage it and it just overtakes us, correct? Absolutely. Um, I think we tend to think of stress as the negative things that happen in our life, but there's also stress connected with positive events, moving, um, starting a new job, uh, meeting new people can be stressful. So those are positive events, but there's also stress connected to that because stress is your body's natural reaction to change. So change is very difficult. Yes. Um, and yes. I think we're in probably more stressful times than we've ever experienced before. We are coming through a very difficult pandemic that was isolating for a lot of people and taxed our healthcare system and really changed the way that we live our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and I think kind of as offshoots of that, we're now dealing with um, inflation everywhere. Groceries are so much more expensive and gas is more expensive. Housing costs and utilities are more expensive. So particularly if we're on a limited or a fixed income, that's stretched much thinner than it was before. And that's incredibly stressful. Uh, I think a lot of people are caring for loved ones that are yeah. ill or elderly um, and being a caretaker is um, probably at the highest risk of that chronic stress that you were talking about. That's a risk to our health and, and has all of those long-term risk factors involved. Um, we're generally built to handle short-term stress very well. We've all heard of the flight or fight or flight response, Right, that occurs when we're faced with a stressful event and our body releases all of these chemicals, adrenaline and cortisol, and that allows us to deal with whatever it is that is that short-term stressor. Um, the prime example of, of knowing what that feels like is if you've ever almost fallen or almost gotten into an accident, that-, that so, Those little tiny moments right before Yes. And then, yep. And then you'll notice in that immediate afterwards that your body is heightened and your heart is racing and you're super, super alert. And then 10, 15 minutes after that, as it leaves your body, you feel tired and you can feel that crash. Those are all of those hormones and chemicals that your body's releasing when you're dealing with a stressful situation. 
Now, the issue with chronic stress is that it isn't a five minute event that you deal with and then move on. With chronic stress, that is a stressor that it stays with you. It's with you all day. It's with you all night. It's ongoing over the weeks or the months. So our body is still doing what it does when we're faced with a stressful event, which is releasing all of those hormones and chemicals that help us to deal with it, but it's not going away. So it's just staying in our systems. It's building up over time. Um, and that's where we really start to see some of the scary effects of stress. You know, you, you before, earlier you mentioned about being a caregiver, one of the, the most stressful uh, situations yes. a person can be in. And I, I agree, that's, uh, that is a perfect example of being in a heightened state of awareness and stress just all the time. Yeah, Because you can't, you can't let, let up. Even someone like, like a, a doctor or a nurse when you're on your shift, um, you know, possibly, uh, you know, while you're on the job, there's so many times during the day when you are in that heightened state, it oh, might absolutely. be, you know, could be your whole, your whole job. But the point is typically you go home or the situation stops yes. and your body returns to normal. And, you know, you, you kind of forget all about that feeling because it went away. Yep, absolutely. But not the case with long-term stress. Yes, yes. Then it's, it's, it's just an ongoing situation. And I think a lot of people are not realizing even maybe that they're having, they don't even recognize the symptoms because it's with you, Jen, all the time. So it's, sure. it's your norm. So yes. what, what might be some things for people to look out for so they can even recognize that they have an issue? So I think stress reactions vary from person to person. So what you need to do is take a minute and think about the things that you feel within your own body when you're stressed out. So some of those common things are GI issues. Some people have nausea, vomiting, cramping, diarrhea. Um, headaches are very yeah. common. Um, muscle aches, muscle tension. I know that's a big one for me. I'll find sometimes when I'm under a lot of stress, I'll get into bed at night and I'm, I have fists actually clenched because I have so much tension that I'm even taking it to bed with me. And not even realizing it until you look down and you see, yes. that you're, yeah. Yes. And then I'll notice I'm like, Ooh, okay, <laughs> let's relax a little bit. And I need to take care of myself. Um, some people have anxiety attacks or panic attacks, which are a very real set of symptoms that can be very scary if you don't know what it is that's happening. Your heart races, you might have trouble regulating your breathing, you might be breathing too fast or feeling like you're drowning and can't catch your breath. Um, a lot of times, nausea might be involved, your hands can go numb. It's really scary if you don't know what it is that you're experiencing. But that can also be uh, a sign that your body's waving that white flag that you need some help. help. Um, so right. it's, it's important to know what your signs are, what the warning signs are for your own body, um, that you're getting to that point that you really need to take a step back and take care of yourself and do some self-care so that you don't get to the point where you're risking those scary long-term effects of stress. But the first thing, as you said, is to recognize, you, you know, yes. your own symptoms and everyone is going to have something different. And, you know, be, let's see, you know, inflation, um, gas prices, politics, Netflix dropped your favorite movie. You'd be surprised at the things that can bring on stress because there's so much going on in everyone's life. Maybe you're grappling with a loved one who was just diagnosed with a serious illness maybe you have a serious illness. It, it really, it, it's never ending for adults and kids even. Uh, but the idea is to nip it in the bud so that you can take care of yourself. Because what are some of these long-term effects, you know, as we go on? You know, if we're not taking care of our stress and those hormone and chemical levels stay in our body, they start to do long-term damage. The scariest risk factors are the cardiovascular risk factors. Yeah. Um, yeah. Long-term stress 
it, it actually makes our blood stickier. It makes our cholesterol higher. We're at a higher risk for diabetes. Um, if our blood is stickier, we are now at a higher risk for strokes, for heart attacks. Um, so these are some really scary, serious uh, potential side effects from not managing our stress long-term. Um, different studies have shown that long-term stress impacts our immune system. So you may have much more trouble fighting off infections that you come in contact with. If you do get sick, you're likely going to be sicker than you would have been. It might take you longer to recover. Um, if you have an injury, it takes longer to heal from injuries. So really our whole system takes a hit when we're not yeah. doing what we need to do to manage stress. From a GI perspective, um, ulcers are a common stress, uh, long-term stress reaction. So right. again, it's all of those chemicals in our body, our, our stomach is producing more stomach acid and it, there's nowhere for that to go when it's long-term and we start to have um, the risk of ulcers and things of that nature. You know, if you're, if you're one of those people that every day after every meal, you're popping, what do they call uh, like Tums or the yep. acids? Well, you know what? That's a clue. That's a good clue right there. Yeah. Uh, maybe your issue, your underlying issue is really, it's stress. Absolutely. And that's what, you know, I have heard um, high blood pressure referred to as the silent killer. Yes. But I feel like, you know, I, I feel like we could say the same thing about stress. Because you oh, know, I agree 100%. You, 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 you may not, you see someone and they look just fine to you. But you know what? They're not. And if you're that person and you say to yourself, hey, I'm good. I look good. I can do my thing. But, in, you know, inside you're screaming. Yeah. yeah, you might be fine until you're not fine anymore. And yeah. I've always said, particularly for caregivers who feel like I don't have time to take care of myself. All of my time is dedicated to working and taking care of my ill loved one. Um, you know what they say when you're on an airplane, when they're giving you the instructions and they always say that when those oxygen masks right. come down, you, you put first. yours on first, because if you pass out, you're not going to be helping anyone else. The same thing goes for stress. And, and I've done caregiver support groups where we've talked about stress management. And I've always said, if you get to that place where stress makes you sick, you are not going to be able to continue to care for someone else. So you have to take care of yourself and do that self-care before you get to that place where it's an emergency or you have your own health issues now. So it's, you know, put your mask on first before you take care of someone else. That's right. That, that, is, that is so true, whether you're on the plane or on the ground. Yes. So some of the things that you might want to do once you acknowledge, because obviously you have to acknowledge first that you 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 have an issue. And look, most of us do. What you know, it, it whatever it is, most of us have some have to deal with stress in one form yes. or another. So what do you find, Jen? Are, are some things that that folks do to just sort of manage? You can't make it go away necessarily. Absolutely. So we have we have to manage. We have to just yeah. take care of it. You know, like you said, Andrea, stress is a part of life. So you do have to, that's why managing your stress is important. You're not going to eliminate the stressors. That's just life. Life happens and we have to cope with it as best we can. So what's really important is that you find that thing that is relaxing and de-stressing for you. And the reason that I say it that way is because it's different for everyone. Of so, course. um, Exercise is a wonderful way to de-stress. Um, I have a lot of friends who do distance running. I have absolutely no desire to do distance running. I don't enjoy it. That is not de-stressing for me. Um, you have to find you that. Know, let me say, if you don't enjoy it, then it's more stress. Absolutely. So absolutely. So you're absolutely. It, it's got to be. It's got to be something you like. Yeah. Yeah. So whether it's a hobby, whether it's reading, whether it's watching trash television or um, knitting listening to music, singing, dancing, um, prayer can be very de-stressing. Um, meditation. Yes. And there are a ton of different meditation exercises that we can do. And um, what I always suggest is go on YouTube, go on the internet yep. and Google meditation exercises. Um, there's something that's called progressive relaxation, 
which is uh, basically focusing on each part of your body, you know, from your toes all the way up to your head and relaxing each part of your body. I will tell you that when I have done that at bedtime, I have never made it from my toes to my head before I fall asleep. Um, another wonderful exercise is called guided imagery. Yeah. Oh, that's just wonderful. It's actually um, someone talks you through a whole exercise of, you know, imagining where you are and focusing on your breathing. And they're just wonderful exercises. The people who do it usually have incredibly soothing voices. Um, there's a woman that does free ones, Bell Ruth Napperstack. I can send you that information so that you can share it. She's fantastic. She's just my favorite. And she will post, um, you know, free 10 minute exercises that you can do. I would caution, don't do listen to any of these while driving because they are very relaxing. So these are things that you want to listen to, you know, when you're at home and comfortable, you know, on your couch, laying down on your bed, wherever you feel most comfortable. Maybe we should say driving is one activity that should be stressful. <laughs> you need to pay attention. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. you're not going to zone out when you drive. Yeah, if you've never done yoga, Yoga can be wonderful for a number of reasons. It's very gentle, low impact exercise. And then usually in a yoga class at the end, there's a meditation exercise, which is incredibly de-stressing and relaxing. Um, so yoga can be wonderful. Uh, again, it's, it's finding that thing that for you in particular is relaxing and de-stressing and enjoyable. Um, but most importantly, don't just figure out what that is, make the time to do it. And it doesn't have to be three hours a day. For me, I'm a working mom of two. I love to read. So I try to make time before I go to sleep, even if it's only for 10 minutes. I like to read fiction. It's an escape for me. My brain starts to shut down and, and tune out those things that were stressful during the day and escape a little bit into, you know, somebody else's story. But I try to do that even for just 10 minutes at night before I go to sleep and then my brain shuts off and I can and let go of some of the stress of the day. So find that Quality, thing. not quantity. But, yes, find that thing, but make sure that you're doing it. And don't wait until you're having all of these symptoms. De-stressing is something that we should all be doing on a regular basis. Um, if we're managing our stress levels, properly and we're taking the time to do those things that are relaxing for us and do kind of let some of that pressure out of the pressure cooker then we won't get to that point where we're having those symptoms and those warning signs where our body is waving that white flag yeah well i totally agree that you know it, it's great to say i'll i'll take 10 minutes i'll have a cup of tea i'll stare out the window and look at the birds but you know what you have to do it Talking about yes. it isn't going to isn't going to make it happen. You actually have to do it. And even if it is only 10 or 15 minutes throughout the day and, you know, don't say you, oh, I don't have 10 minutes to myself. Well, Everyone if, does. If you found yourself in the ambulance being rushed off to the hospital because you had chest pains from stress, suddenly you'd find yourself with a lot of free time. So the idea here is you, you want to. Um, acknowledge your issue, find out something that helps you relax. And, you know, let me just say a little uh, shameless self-promotion for SCAN. You know, one of the, the um, biggest facets of SCAN is our uh, fitness classes. And we do have yes. several, we have yoga, we have floor yoga, chair yoga, we have fitness dance, strong body, strong bones. These are all fabulous exercise classes. And when we speak to folks who come to SCAN, one of the things, you know, that's their downtime. That's their de-stressing time. So whether it's taking a class, taking a walk, uh, cooking, baking, talking to your friend, doing a meditation, the point is you need to find something that works, whatever it is, it has to work for you. And then you have to just do it. Yes, yes. Knowing what it is that's de-stressing is the first step along the journey, but you actually Second have step. to make time to do it. And two like you said, two parts. It doesn't have to be time consuming. It can be 10 minutes, you know, something that is just time for yourself to disconnect and let go of the stress of the day. 
But remember, if you are someone who's reaching for those antacids multiple times throughout the day, oh, I shouldn't have eaten this, I shouldn't have eaten that. You know what? Maybe it's not about the food. Maybe it's yeah. about your stress. So, you know, you take a deep look and, you know, be a little introspective here and figure it out because I, I believe stress is a silent killer and um, we're living in some crazy times, right? And Yes, we are. Probably you know, crazier than ever before. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be in the history books. So when they look back and they're going to say, wow, those people must have been very stressed <laughs> and they'd be right. They'd yep. be right. So we're going to take care of ourselves. That's what we're trying to point out today, right? Yes, please take care of yourselves. Put your mask on before you help anyone else. Right, and put those antacids down and find a better solution. And you know what? Another solution, of course, is always um, therapy, seeing a counselor. Because sometimes we, we simply cannot manage our stress on our own. And that's okay. You have to acknowledge that as well. And if getting help is the only way for you to do this, then that's what you need to do. You know, if you broke your arm, you'd go to the emergency room. Well, if you're broken in other areas, you need to treat that as well, right? That's important to say. I agree 100%. Um, statistically, through this whole crazy COVID situation, um, anxiety has really been through the roof. And anxiety is a very close sister of stress. Um, and, and having an anxiety disorder is a very real diagnosis, just like diabetes or yeah. um, hypertension is. It's something that sometimes when we're at that position where um, we actually have an anxiety disorder, we might need a little bit of extra help. And that's OK. You know, you, you want to treat whatever is happening within your body. And if going and seeing your doctor and having a conversation about it and, and finding some options for treatment for you, if that is what will get you through some of these stressful times, take care of yourself by, by all means necessary. Again, it's putting on your own oxygen mask first yes. because you're not gonna be any good to anybody else. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely true. Well, Jen, thank you so much for being with us this morning and really sharing a lot of important information. I hope that those watching this video will share. And of course, we'll put all of Jen's contact information out there as well for Ascend Hospice. And, you know, just please be good to yourself out there, right? Absolutely. And thank you for having me on, Andrea. And thank you to the SCAN community for sharing your coffee with me this morning. Oh, well. Always my pleasure. So remember out there, if it's important to you, it's important to us. I'm Andrea Tarr. We'll see you next time on Scan FYI. Bye, everyone. Bye, Jen. Take care.